I'll start off on some planting and pruning. An important step is getting a good plant to start with. And you can buy plants bare root and you can buy plants in containers. I always like the plants in containers better. And there's a big difference, but just because it's a one gallon pot or a three gallon pot or whatever, there are differences between containers. You gotta trust your nursery, know your nursery, get a picture of the plants. Don't just go by price or, or container size. I can put a small plant in a big pot, but that might not always mean it's a three or five gallon plant. Um, plant spacing, it, it depends, but normally on a rabbit eye plant, 12 to 14 feet apart between the rows. Now that 12 is an absolute minimum. And what Jacob was saying about the equipment that gets in there, that is a, you, if you want a driveway between them, you might, they may, may need to be 30 or 40 feet apart between one row and another, depends on what you want to drive between them. But 12 foot by far is a minimum. 14, 15 or 16 might, even, might be better, but it all depends on what equipment you want to get between them. Rabbit eye plants are planted five to six feet apart down the road. If you want a hedgerow type system, if you want to be able to walk all, and that's the most productive on a per acre basis. If you're wanting to walk all the way around a plant, um, obviously they would be further apart and, and they may be 12 or, or more feet a, a, apart down the row if that's what you want. I like the row and you mow down one side and up the other and, and the hedgerow system is my favorite. We plant the plants during the dormant season and I will say if it's a container plant that can be set out any time of year but if, if you're not able to really hand water and tend to those, even the, the drip irrigation, I would hate to do this in the middle of the summer. So the dormant season is the planted way to do it, unless you're just planting a few plants. And that, that instance, if it's a container plant, can be set out any time of year. What We can dig the hole a lot bigger than the root ball. And I don't, maybe y'all have heard putting a dollar plant in a $5 hole but the hole is important. And we joke a lot, is it a whole hole or a half a hole? But it, the hole is extremely important. Can commercial folks, if that got, had the equipment, they would subsoil a row, a row and we would, and Jacob mentioned it, I'm gonna skip over it, but the organic matter of the pine bark or peat moss, that's what we put in there. When uh, we set a plant out, all plants are the term, we say the word root bound a lot of times, but it's the root circling that pot and they'll continue to circle even when we set the plant out. When we pl pull a plant out of a container, I'll take a knife and cut slits around the sides of the uh, root ball and that'll get the roots growing out in different directions. You can massage the root ball with your hands, but just slitting them with a knife is, is faster. One area that a lot of people, and this is not just with blueberries, but it's with a lot of plants, is they plant too deep. Do not plant it any deeper than it was growing in that container or where it was growing at a nursery if it was the, the uh, bare root. I'd rather, even leaving it up a little high, is okay, but do not plant it too deep. It will die, we see this a lot. Jacob mentioned the raised beds and I'm gonna move on just because he mentioned, I, the raised beds, especially and a lot of times statewide, we think of planting rabbit eye plants. And if you, for instance, plant the uh, Southern high bush, they get root rot right bad. And if we don't mound those up, they're not gonna survive long. So they need to be mounded up. And this is a mound and it has pine straw around it, but it is mounded up just as Jacob described. And I've gotten to where I recommend this with rabbit eyes too. And years ago, we didn't do this, but it is extremely common to see that now. Jacob mentioned mulch, I'm gonna move on. So, but mulching is extremely important. The weeds is just, a, uh, slows the growth down considerably. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't wanna do but if we could remove the blooms the first year that we set the plant out. So if you set a plant out last winter, if we could go pinch or rub these blooms off, um, 
that plant would grow so much faster. And people always ask me how big is a blueberry when it has fruit. And I'm like, well, you know, I've rooted them and they'll have bloom and have fruit the next spring or they'll bloom and then they'll have fruit the summer. And I used to work at a nursery and people would want to buy blueberry. We always try to rub the blooms off because the plant really almost grow twice as fast. I mean, it, 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 you're, if you're wanting to grow a plant, you would want, not want it to fruit that first year. And so you always got a few that you miss. And uh, this picture, right as I took that picture, I rubbed the blooms off and rub those berries off. But that one on the right there, that's just berries that I missed. And you know, at a big nursery, you'll miss some and you'll have a few berries on them. And somebody will come out and they'll say, we, we pick me out a good plant and I'll pick them out a good plant. And they're like, no, 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 I want that with fruit on it. Well, it's half the size of these others. They grow so much smaller with fruit. Well, so think about all that stuff Jacob said and as I'm talking about and just keep in mind when an extension agent takes a picture at your place, you're either going to make the highlight reel or the don't do it this way uh, section. And here we go with no mound, no pine straw, no pine bark, just dug holes and set them out. These plants, it, it's hard to tell how old they are. I pass by this place all the time. They just don't grow. They're just sitting there, but they are obviously not maintained, no irrigation. I mean, they're, they're not maintained well, and they're obviously not as productive either. But somebody is coming out here mowing grass between all these plants. So there's a lot of time goes into this, but I don't think what they're getting out is worth it. Weed control, mulching, pruning correctly, irrigating, those are all major um, chores that we have to do and keep up out of, well, we can say blueberries or most anything else. How productive is our plant going to be when it's competing with the grasses? All right, we're going to talk about blue pruning. And there's two times a year we, we prune blueberries. And one time is in the summertime, and the other time is in the winter. So we do summer pruning and winter pruning. Basically, we any time of year we can cut off any plant that the, the branches are hanging low, if it's dead or diseased. Um, I'll get to the mature height in a minute um, and removing the big canes. Let me get into the summer pruning and we'll come back to uh, some other things. So here I've got kind of a before and then the next slide will be an after picture. Um, a blueberry has fruit off of one year old growth. So what bloomed this spring that we will pick fruit this summer grew last year. So if I prune off all my new growth from last year, my one year old growth in the wintertime, I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna get a lot of fruit. So the summer pruning is done after you pick your last berries off of that plant, which is by, it depends on where you are in the state. It can be the end of July, but it, it varies depending on where you're at. That's the time of year we would do summer pruning, maintaining that mature height and I, I said maintain it at six feet, but that just kind of depends. If it's much over six feet, you can't reach up and pick it. So I want it to be at that high, but maybe I want it to be less. It all depends on who's picking and how high to reach up. Um, if you ever pick a lot of berries, reaching up to pick up at your head high and six feet high wears your arms out and gets you tired. If you're hand picking, um, picking chest high and, and waist high, can go a little faster. So it all depends on the person. So here's, this is the summertime and, it, and it's hard to tell there, but what's been done, a commercial guy might take, I've, we've done with a sickle mower before and I've done with like gasoline shears and sheared them off at uh, just over waist high. Then they'll regrow three feet through August, September, October. And that's where the fruit is the following year. If it's a home situation, I don't like that hedge to look. So I'll go individually and cut out certain shoots that are getting up way over six feet. Now, it all depends on the time and how many plants. If you just got a few dozen plants, I'd prune by hand. But if you got acres, I would use equipment. Wintertime pruning, and this is after they get to be seven or eight years old and um there's more, again, the blueberry has fruit off of one-year-old wood. 
Well, so you've got to grow this summer to make fruit next summer, if, if that makes sense. With these older canes, you don't get a lot of growth on these older shoots that's seven and eight and 10 and 20 sometimes years old. It puts on very little new growth. So if I've got very little new growth, that means I've got very little berries that I'm going to be picking off of there. So we want to take some of these older canes and take them out. Now, this is after year seven or eight. Well, it depends on the equipment. If you got picking machines, I've worked on a blueberry farm, a picking machine would pull some of these plants like this on the right and may pull them up out of the ground. They're too wide at the bottom. Plus the way a picking machine works, it shakes the, the plant and the ripe berries fall off. If there's a big, a uh, lot of shoots spaced all around at the base, you got a big hole there that these ripe berries fall in. And that's not what you want to happen. So it kind of depends on how you're picking. But roughly speaking, you want your plants about eight inches or maybe a little more than that wide at the base. And anything that these uh, new shoots that come up from, from the root system, it's a stoloniferous plant. It'll be a shoot to come up from the root system. Um, anything comes up in the row, we leave. Anything that comes up outside of that eight inches or so at the base, we, uh, we take out, but that varies on what kind of, a, if you're hand picking, that's a little different. Um, we want seven, eight or so canes grow, there's too many in this picture on the right. And after again, a few years, we start taking one or two of these big canes out a year. Now here's the question, which canes do you take out? Well, one, if it's damaged or diseased, that would be how on my list to, to come out. A lot of times it's the tallest one that comes out. Um, a lot of times it's the, the oldest one. So a lot of times it's the biggest, tallest is the oldest. But, but some, another way to look at, look at my picture here on the left. There's these mossy looking growth growing on this shoot, blueberry shoot. And that's called lichens. Lichens is not killing the plant. Lichens grows on things that doesn't grow. You'll see the lichens growing on a mailbox. You'll see lichens growing on the side of a house or a rock. It's not causing it not to grow. The plant's not growing, and then the lichens grow, if that makes sense. So when I see the lichens, that tells me that shoot is not growing. Well, that's usually the first one on my list. I mean, it damaged, diseased, and then some with lichens on it. That tells me that shoot is not growing, so that's the one I'm going to take out. I said you take one to two of these canes out a year. If you've been 20 years and not pruned, sometimes we take out a whole lot more than one. And again, this is after they're seven or eight years old. And we take that cane out at the base. We'll let one of these new shoots grow in its place. And as they're regrowing, um, the blueberry can be aggressive growing. They can grow several feet. Every time it grows 18 inches or maybe even to cut the top out of it, keep it branching. If we keep it branching, we'll have a lot more fruiting wood. A lot of times you'll see a shoot that's head high that don't have any branches on it. And it'll have some berries on it, but it would have had a lot more berries had we been pinching the tops out. Now, that's hard to do when you've got acres and acres, but if it's a home situation, it's fairly easy to do. Um, here's a, a few things to think about. More vigorous shoots generally produce larger berries. So think about that when you're out there picking, trying to fill a bucket up. If I had, what can I do to get vigorous shoots? Well, keeping these old shoots pruned out. A blueberry, the root system uh, lives many years. People ask me how long a blueberry lives, and I, I usually my answer is I don't know. But I'm picking berries off of a plant at my grandparents' house. In every summer that was planted in the 50s. So, you know, 70 years plus is not uncommon to say. They can live a long time. But the above, that's the root system, is that the above ground portion, if you prune it correctly, that what you see above ground may only be seven or eight years old or less, and which is the case uh, on, on our place. But more vigorous shoots generally produce larger berries. So if I can keep these old canes pruned out, let a new, younger, vigorous shoot fill that void, hopefully my goal would be to have larger berries. Earlier ripened fruit generally produce larger 
you know, then later after and fruit on the same plant, that's what we're talking about here with the picture on the, 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 the third picture there on the right. You'll see little white berries and they'll become red and then they'll wrap into blue. But a lot of times later in the season on that same plant, you won't see as many, um, you won't see as big as big a plants as those first berries you start picking will be the, the biggest ones. And the first and second picture there, the first one is just a young vigorous shoot that had a lot of blooms on it and some berries. This second picture there in the middle is an older shoot. Now it had to put on new growth or it wouldn't have bloomed and it wouldn't have set fruit, but it does not set near the fruit that a younger shoot would. So think about that. And I don't know if we'll talk about it in this. There's a bee called a Habropoda. It's a Southeastern blueberry bee that uh, it uh, pollinates our blueberries. The honeybee, and that's another story, they don't have a mouth part long enough. They kind of go in from the side of a bloom and pollinate it, but it's that uh, another bee that does the, the work on the, the blueberry. So, how do you like that picture? So that's the picture I took after I, you do all these extension guidelines and, and, and just look at the harvest that you can get and all off the blueberries. So I'll take any questions and I feel like I went over that fast, but if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them.